Hello, all of you wonderful people out there in my cosmic community. Thank you so much for being here and for watching this video. In today's video, I'm going to be covering a hot topic around eclipse season, which is lunar nodes and especially node reversals and nodal returns. And so um, in this video, I'm going to first discuss the general energy of the nodes and what they represent in the birth chart. Even if this is a review for you, I highly recommend listening to it because you might get some uh, additional understanding or information. There's a lot of different stuff out there on the nodes. And even with me, as I continue to do readings, as I continue to explore and to learn and to grow and to branch out into other different um, astrology techniques and lineages, I learn more and more about the nodes. They're very multifaceted, they're very layered, and they're very important in the birth chart. Next, after that, I'm going to be discussing the nodal return, which is when the transiting nodes come to their exact position where they were um, in the zodiac at the exact date, time, and location of your birth, so in the birth chart. So this is where they return to the birth position. And then the node reversal, which is the exact opposite of that, which is when the nodes reverse and you have the transiting south node conjunct your north node and the transiting north node conjunct your south node, which is a very different energy than the nodal return. Turn. And I'm also going to be discussing a little bit about um, lunar node maturation, which has to do with specific time frames in which the north and south nodes mature in everybody's lifetime and what that actually means. And so let's get into it. <laughs> um, so first and foremost, the general energy of the nodes. So I always liken the north node to sort of a toddler-like energy. The north node represents your path, your purpose, the direction that you're meant to move into in this lifetime, but it's a direction that you've never gone in in any previous lifetime. You have no experience dealing with the energy um, associated with the specific placement of the north node in your birth chart. And by specific placement, I mean the house placement especially, the sign placement, any aspects to other planets, especially conjunctions, all of these things are going to be a significant part of the, the node story, which is something that if you guys are interested in, this is your community. So let me know and I'll discuss more about the nodes uh, later this month if that's something that you want to go deeper into interpreting the nodes based on like signs, houses, aspects, all of that. Um, but for the purpose of this video, we're going to be discussing this more generally under the assumption that you have an idea of what the nodes represent. And so um, the north node, as I was saying, is um, sort of a toddler-like energy. It's a, an area where this is something that's really new and really exciting for you. You came here to develop this area. You came here to learn about it. You came here to explore. You came here to grow into your north node. Um, and it is an energy kind of like a toddler. Um, I always talk about like the north node being an area in your chart where you are like a toddler learning how to walk for the very first time. Um, you might be a little apprehensive at first. You might feel a little ambivalent toward standing on your own two feet and moving forward. You might um, run a little too fast before you've even really learned how to walk properly or how to uh, maintain balance when you're standing and things like that. Um, and so, you know, you can make a lot of mistakes in the North Node area because there's there's this like naive energy because it's an area where you are innocent, you don't know any better, and you're just going to go in and do things because it seems exciting and it's you almost feel like instinctually compelled to do so. And like a toddler, you might, you know, run, uh, walk too fast, trip, fall on your face. And you might have to, you might cry, you might, you know, need help from somebody else. You might retreat back into the south node area of your chart, which we'll talk about in just a second. Um, and sometimes you might um, not, you might not want to go back and just start, you know, walking again. You might take a couple of days to really re regain your composure, but usually you'll forget about your mistakes really quickly, um, almost to the point where you'll, you're likely to repeat those mistakes. <laughs> it's like your instincts are not developing very quickly there because there are no instincts to begin with. So um, the instincts really don't develop until later on when the north and south nodes become more mature, which is what we'll talk about at the end of this video. But it's like this area where you need to learn how to do something in this lifetime. It's something that you haven't done in your past lifetime. There is a karmic destined reason that you are gravitating toward this energy and it's something that you need to fulfill, that you need to embrace, that you need to explore in this lifetime. And um, that's a big part of that North Node energy. Um, it also, 
So like I said before, this is an area where you might repeat a lot of mistakes over and over again. Even if at first you were naive, you might jump in again um, after making a mistake, after falling on your face, after hurting yourself in some way or being hurt in some way. You might try it again even more like tenaciously and um, you know, you might make similar or the same mistakes multiple times before you really start to gain those instincts and you start to learn that the way that you were doing it isn't really working for for you, right? So that's something that you have to kind of figure out. And that's something that takes time and experience and gets better with age. Um, this is also an area where you're going to be feeling very insatiable in your quest for exploration and knowledge. This is an area that can make people kind of um, greedy or self-involved. It's also an area where you might kind of fake it till you make it. So you might feel like an imposter uh, when you're embracing those topics, that area in your chart represented by the North Node. That's where this like imposter syndrome that people talk about, you'll feel that in that North Node area. So an example of that would be, you know, if you're somebody who has the North Node in the 10th house and you feel like you really came here to explore uh, growing your career, to have a really prominent place in the world, to be really successful on an external level where people are recognizing you for your talents and gifts and you're, you're giving those to the world in some way, um, you might, you know, not feel like you're worthy of success. You might feel like you don't really know what you're doing. You might be very fake or very... Um, not necessarily shallow, but it's almost like you're you're modeling after other people and being something that you're not out in the world, out in your career, because you don't understand how you're supposed to be doing this yet in a way that's true to you. So hopefully that makes sense what I'm talking about there. So there can be this like sort of fake it till you make it energy. It's also an area where you feel kind of awkward, right? And that's why you might be looking to others and sort of mimicking what other people are doing sometimes, while at other times you might decide that this is there's a certain way that you want to do it or that feels good to you and you might just jump in all crazy and that might not work and that's where you make these mistakes and have to backtrack um, this is a really pioneering energy. So this is an energy where you're going to do things in ways that other people are not doing them. You're going to do it in your own unique way. You're learning how to sort of break new ground in this area involving these topics and themes with the North Node. And, um, and so that's kind of a big part of that energy. It's very oriented toward material progress, material gains, and actually taking action out in the world. So seeing things actually formulate out an external reality, that North Node energy. The South Node, uh, um, on the other hand, I, I like to describe as sort of like a wise old man. And this is something that I recently just started thinking about and utilizing. Because if the North Node is like a toddler, uh, you're new in this area, you're really old <laughs> in the South Node area. This is an area where you've had lifetimes of experience, lifetimes of you know making those mistakes, falling on your face, learning the right way to do things or learning the way that, to do things that makes you successful successful or that works for you. Um, this is an area where you've acquired a lot of wisdom in this lifetime too, and that could be a part of it, or through your ancestral lineage. Uh, there could be an innate wisdom that comes through your heritage, through your um, ancestral line, but it's also going to be wisdom that you developed and are carrying forward from these past lifetime experiences. If you've ever had a past life regression, you might see that the energy of the South Node and the placement of the South Node comes up or the themes and topics come up in a lot of ways and you're repeating that over and over and over again. In this lifetime, that's where you are um, really well seasoned. You have a lot of really innate talents and gifts and wisdom and understanding that you just are born with, you just come in with. You understand how this area works very naturally and very instinctually, uh, whereas the North Node, you don't have that so much, right? Because you haven't developed that yet. And so this is an area where you have a lot of talents and gifts that you can really carry forward into this lifetime. However, you have to carry those gifts forward in a way that is um, more selfless and more uh, spiritually driven and spiritually oriented or driven or oriented toward helping other people or helping humanity in some way. This is where you can't really focus too much on the outcome, especially on that physical tangible level, which is really what the focus of the North Node is. It's like a physical expression the south node it's like i know that this is the right way to do it i know that i have this talent and this gift and i'm going to give it to the world or i'm going to give it to my family i'm going to give it to these people and you know i'm not really concerned about 
the outcome or having some sort of tangible repercussions or some sort of tangible benefits that come to me personally. It's not a selfish energy. The North Node is where that selfish energy is. It's all about self-gratification, right? Um, the South Node is more about taking what you already learned and to use it to gratify others and in, in, in not yourself so much. Um, that being said, this is an area where you can be kind of stuck in a rut. So think about like a, an old like an old man, wise or not. I mean, older people usually do have a lot more wisdom, right? But think about like a stereotypical sort of like older man who's like wise and well-seasoned and he's been doing the same things over and over again throughout his lifetime. He learned what works for him. And so he continues to repeat those same patterns, right? He continues to do the things that he knows will work because of his experience that he feels comfortable with. He doesn't look to other outside solutions to problems that arise he can't see them or maybe he's unwill unwilling to change in a lot of ways that's that south node area right um it's somebody who's old and set in their ways even though they carry a lot of wisdom and they understand that certain things work in certain ways and they do have a lot of gifts to share to the world the benefits of youth are that you're more um open not for everyone i'm using this as kind of a generalization and like a, a good sort of metaphor for this but um, you know, kind of thinking about that, like the old person who's been doing the same thing and who know, is set in their ways versus like somebody who's younger and has that really excited, naive energy, like they're willing to try anything and that can, you know, bite them in the butt, but it could also uh, prove to be useful. They can discover new things that can actually work even better that other people might not even know about. That's kind of that dichotomy there. So uh, the south node can be an area where you feel like you're stuck in a rut, where you're not able to see past your um, comfort zone. And that is an area that feels more comfortable to you. So when you go too hard and too fast on the opposite end of the spectrum in the north node area of your chart, you might retreat back into the south node and kind of hide there for a little while, do, what, do what's familiar, do what's comfortable, do what feels um what feels less risky and what feels more comfortable to you, that would be kind of, that's a normal thing that people do, especially when they're younger. They'll kind of go back and forth between the uh, North Node and the South Node in their charts. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's basically the North Node and the South Node energy. Um, in general, the nodes and the nodal access is going to access is going to be an area that's more faded, more karmic. You'll have a lot of synchronicities and signs and very strange circumstances that feel faded, that feel like they carry an extra level of importance that will occur when the north and the south nodes become activated in one way or another. And that's always kind of fun when you have those experiences. Sometimes it's not fun because sometimes they can be negative experiences. It really depends depends on your node placement and what types of transits are being involved here. But usually it's more of like a synchronistic, faded, destined, like it feels important. It's very interesting. It makes life interesting for sure. Um, and it, it lets you know that there's something beyond this one physical reality that you're in right now. And so the North and South nodes are very important in that way as well. So the node return and the node reversal are um, important points. So basically you learn to develop your north node and move into new things in that area and to become less naive to, you know, develop certain instincts there through experience. But the transits, especially the, the node returns and the node reversals, help you to get to that point. Same thing with the south node. You might be stuck in a rut, but then you can branch out and start to learn to do new things. You can learn how to take your innate talents and gifts and give them to the world in some way. You need to find a balance between the old and the sort of wise energy and this like new exploratory energy of the north node versus the south node. And again, the node reversals are especially good at helping you to create that balance. The node returns are a little bit more problematic. And so um, the nodal cycles last roughly 18.6 years um, from start to finish. So the nodes will transit all 12 signs during that time period. And so you have a node reversal every, a node reversal or a node return every roughly 19.3 years. So, or not 19, sorry, roughly every nine. Point three years. And then you'll have your first node return around 18, 18 and a half years old, right? Between 18 and 19 years old. 
And so the node reversal is where you get to come back into balance. It's where you actually get to focus on growing and expanding on the areas of life that you thought you already knew. You thought you've already finished gaining knowledge in that area. Um, you're already really comfort, comfortable and set in your ways. That north node infusion actually breaks you out of that creates balance and allows you to learn new things or to actually focus on gaining tangible, um, real results in the physical reality that can can benefit you as well as benefiting the good of humanity, right? It's balancing that need to do something, um, you know, for some sort of spiritual purpose for other people and the need to utilize your talents and gifts from the past in a new way to benefit you and to better your own personal experience. That's what that node reversal does. Um, same thing with the north node area. You can actually... Um, acquire new wisdom from past experiences it's kind of where you've been playing with the north node a little bit you start to learn from your mistakes you start to um, gain some some wisdom some level of wisdom in that north node area and it balances you out too because that north node area can be like i said before insatiable you can be obsessed with that area of your life and with developing that area of your life at certain points in time and this actually brings it brings it back in and causes you to let go of some of the excesses in that area and also allows you to have the wisdom to have the um not really the foresight but like the hindsight <laughs> to learn from your mistakes so that's kind of that node reversal energy and so the node reversal is usually a much more pleasant experience for people and a lot more and it's a lot more fruitful for people than the node return the node return causes a lot of excess and a lot of problems um, it does bring you what you need both of these transits will bring you what you need the node reversal will bring you what you need in order to create balance the node return will bring you what you need in order to let go of the past and jump really far into the future. But um, the node reversal, because it does create that balance, it tends to be an easier transit, actually, as opposed to the nodal return. Um, so the nodal return, the first one happens around 18, 19 years old, you'll have one of those roughly every 18.6 years. And that's, again, where the north and south nodes return to their natal position by transit. They'll return to the position that they were in at the time that you were born. And so you'll have double the dose of north node energy. Uh, and so in the north node area of your chart, you're going to be even more excited, even more enthusiastic, even more insatiable, even more obsessed with doing, 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 creating, 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 getting tang tangible results. You'll be even more selfish and people can become like super ruthless, especially if they have the north node conjunct, like especially the sun or Mars or their ascendant, they can be ruthless in their pursuit of self-gratification and self-development. And so that can be good if that's something that you need and it will bring you what you need, right? The North Node, when it's activated, it brings you events, it brings you people, it brings you circumstances that you were meant to come into and experience in this lifetime it brings things that are faded it brings things that you set up theoretically prior to even being born so that way you would have these crazy experiences these crazy obstacles these crazy changes in direction and this is one of those big ones when you have the node return you're just going to be catapulted in a brand new direction um, affiliated with that north node energy and what it represents in your own personal chart. And so that's going to be a part of that node return. The node, the south node in the node return is an area where you're going to be going through a lot of loss, a lot of letting go, a lot of purging of the old because that's another um, layer of that south node energy. It's something you're moving past and moving on from. And so this can be a time where that south node area feels like it's unraveling. So an example of that would be if you have your south node in the 11th house, a lot of um, really karmic, really faded, very strong connections and friendship that felt familiar, that felt like family, that felt really good and positive might all of a sudden be very unsatisfying. They might be bogging you down. And you might realize that these are connections that are past their expiration date. And so you have to move on from that energy and you have to let go of a lot of people at that time. At the same time, faded new connections can come in. However, these connections won't actually be new. Um, in this lifetime, they might be new or they probably will be new. 
But it could be that, um, you know, they again, they feel familiar. It feels karmic. It feels like, I already think I know this person, but I don't. They just feel so familiar. This feels so right. This feels so comfortable. Um, those are the types of like south node connections that can come in. Or people from your past that you thought that you let go of might come back into your life around those times too. So that would be an example of like the south node and a node return in the 11th house in particular, the house of friendship and social networks um, and social interaction. Uh, so hopefully that gives you a good starting point for the node return. The node reversal, as I mentioned before, you're kind of balancing things out. So that's going to be a, a little bit of an easier energy, but you're still going to have those faded, really karmic, synchronistic circumstances coming up and your life is going to be turned upside down, but not in a way that's going to be so like wild where you're like purging so much and like starting all these new things. It's kind of where you're creating a balance by letting go of stuff that no longer serves you, letting go of old habits, um, letting go of old beliefs systems moving into new things like you're creating that balance but it's not going to be as big usually of an upheaval unless you really need it unless you've become very imbalanced in your nodal access um you know between what you're growing and what you're kind of you know utilizing your talents for and moving away from so um that's that's pretty much the way that it goes with the node reversal and the node return the final thing I wanted to talk about here is um, node, lunar node maturation. And so you'll continue to kind of bounce back and forth between gravitating toward the north node and what's new and gravitating to the south node and what's comfortable throughout your entire life and having to make a lot of adjustments that'll come about in these very faded karmic important synchronistic ways to those areas of your life throughout your lifetime where this really um, starts to level out and where you don't have so many ups and downs and twists and turns and um, sometimes big upheavals because that's what the nodes bring is going that's going to happen when the nodes mature and so the north node matures around age 42 and that's when you really learn how to harness the energy of your north node you've gained wisdom through experience through making lots and lots of mistakes but also through making lots of like incredible strides and incredible progress in that area of your life and it comes to this state of maturation where you really start to fully understand what this area is about and how to utilize this energy appropriately the same thing can be said for the south node which matures at age 48 that's where you learn to take your talents and gifts from the past that work for you in this lifetime that help you in this lifetime without being stuck in a rut and without being bogged down by any excess or by any old past karma um, that you're carrying with you that maybe isn't so positive. Maybe some of these things can potentially be not necessarily talents or gifts, but things that you have gotten stuck in a pattern with in your previous cycles that you need to break free from once and for all. That could be people or relationship dynamics. That could be specific situations. That could be ways that you um, create problems for yourself through your own actions. All of these different things. It's like you have to move past this as a part of it because that's bogging you down and preventing you from moving into what you need to move into and learn in the North Node area. And so at age 48, the South Node matures and you really understand how to work with this energy more appropriately. So by the time you leave your 40s and enter into your 50s, you have this really great balance between wisdom and, um, and this innate sense of wanting to grow and develop and explore new, new things. You know how to take the talents from the past and like channel them into your future reality. And obviously I'm not there yet. <laughs> But I've experienced lots of a few node reversals and um, you know, at least one node return so far. And so, um, you know, it's one of those things where you're going to be going back and forth with it until you reach that point of maturity. So that is what I wanted to tell you guys and teach you guys about the North and South nodes during this really wonderful eclipse season here. If you have questions, you can post them down below. Um, and if you just want to comment and let me know about your experience with your North and South node placements, your node reversals, your node returns. I would love to hear it and I'm sure other community members would love to learn from your experience. So thank you guys so much again and I'll see you in the next one.